is a video demonstrating a perineal proctosigmoidectomy with posterior levator plasty for the management of rectal prolapse. This is the case of a 91-year-old female with recurrent reducible rectal prolapse following prolonged recovery from an orthopedic procedure. The prolapse caused significant symptoms for the patient and was noted in office to be circumferential and reducible at approximately 7 centimeters in length. Given the patient's age and her past medical and surgical history, she was counseled on the risk, benefits, and alternatives to a perineal approach for surgical repair. The patient is placed in the lithotomy position and the prolapse is exteriorized. A Lone Star retractor is used for improved visualization. Bobby cautery is used to circumferentially mark out future incision sites approximately 1 to 2 centimeters proximal to the dentate line. A full thickness proctotomy is then made in the anterior surface of the rectum. Care must be taken to not go too deep to injure any underlying rectosigmoid colon. A full thickness rectal wall incision can then be carried out with a handhold bipolar device. This continues circumferentially following a previously marked out tract. When the circumferential incision is complete, the distal edge of the rectum can be grasped and the prolapse is delivered in a single loop of exteriorized bowel. The anterior peritoneal reflection can be excised sharply with monopolar energy. This allows for entry into the abdominal cavity and reduction of any remaining redundant rectosigmoid colon. When the colonic transection point has been identified, the mesentery is isolated and divided with bipolar energy. Care should be taken to ensure that the mesenteric transection site is flush with your future colonic transection to ensure adequate perfusion of your colonic conduit. We then perform a plication of the levator ani muscles, beginning first posteriorly. Levator plasty helps to decrease the size of the aperture of pelvic floor defect to help prevent future prolapsing events. A full thickness colotomy is then made with electric cautery on the anterior surface of the colon. Our hand sewn colonal anastomosis begins here with interrupted vicral sutures. The colotomy is extended laterally and a systematic placement of interrupted sutures is placed to prevent retraction of the colon into the abdomen. The specimen is fully detached and handed off the field. The final posterior cardinal position is secured with a vicral suture. With the use of a Hill-Ferguson retractor, any remaining gaps between cardinal positions may be then filled in systematically circumferentially.
We again used the Hill-Ferguson retractor to inspect our anastomosis circumferentially to assess for any gaps. A gentle digital rectal exam can then confirm patency and identification of any other defects. The patient had an uneventful postoperative course and was discharged home on postoperative day two. While in house, they start stool softeners and fiber while we wait return of bowel function to ensure no negative sequelae with passage of the first stool.